everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. You guys know that uh, things are always a change in here at the Reptarium and we're showing this and we're showing that and it's been a long time, probably close to seven or eight months since I've done kind of cage by cage tour of the place. So I figured I'll give you kind of the idea of the changes that have happened and maybe the changes that are gonna continue to happen. Obviously this isn't changing at all right here. Of course, this is my girl Ivy and Aries the male over here. Absolutely amazing. I love this display. I mean, I remember when we came up with the concept, started to build it out. I really didn't even think it was gonna turn out as good as it actually did. So it's a definitely a cool thing. And certainly when we do the next expansion in 3.0, we're gonna have a similar kind of centerpiece, right? But Aries and Ivy love this enclosure. I love getting in the enclosure. You guys know she's my therapy animal. And Aries, I tell you what, is getting to the point where he's becoming pretty good too because I go in there and he kind of chills out with me as well. Of course, this wall here is uh, just some of the smaller stuff we have going on. In particular, we have our two little frill dragons that we produce a year ago this happens to be chicken nugget right here and this is the girl and you can see she's got those beautiful frills but they never frill up because they're just so docile you know we actually have another little baby that's next door at BHB that will eventually make its way over and then with any luck Nova and Lilith will have a bunch of babies that's coming up here and then it's just gonna be a matter of are we going to actually keep them or if we're gonna sell some eventually I don't know because they're, they're just so darn cute I never want to get rid of them that's the thing about these guys of course we had Helen moved over here just recently and she's doing really well this is her new enclosure she seems to love it and she is just really really doing good of course the no idea albino ball python just just absolutely amazing and again people love just handling her because she doesn't have eyes I think that people that are just a little bit timid with snakes of course will be like oh well she's not looking at me so she's okay of course we've got our monster black throat monitor up here of course griddle who is uh, getting better he really is I mean he's just uh, gonna be a slow process and we're gonna look into maybe getting another black throat monitor here pretty soon but more than that, I'm not gonna ruin that surprise of course we've got marshmallow here the ivory Burmese python starting to get some size to him he's probably only going to be able to stay in this enclosure for another maybe few months and then he'll have to move up and that's the thing right is that we're always constantly changing the environment here at the reptarium you know animals have to go into larger cages you know we've got of course new animals that are coming in we're always redesigning our enclosures we've got a whole bunch of things on the dock and of course you know we'll eventually get to the 3.0 of course we've got Irwin down here the blue tongue skink baby kush not a lot you have to say about this. I mean, one of the coolest animals at the zoo for sure. One of the most intelligent animals, there's no doubt about it. A crocodile monitor, probably getting about twice the size. And Bruce is coming a long, long way with this animal. I mean, he's getting to the point where he can put his hand right up to his face and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to get this animal really tame soon. I can guarantee it. Of course, our fish spa, the gear that I absolutely love. You can just see, look at these guys. Hello. They just come crushing over here. And it really feels like bubbles. You know, when people first come in, they're always like, Oh my gosh, does it hurt? They don't have teeth. It feels almost like little tickly bubbles and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Of course, our latest exhibit, Drogo here. Of course, we love Drogo. And Drogo is just chilling out where he normally chills out during the daytime. And look at, come over here. Look at this cute little face. There's that little cute little Drogo. Hi, baby. I mean, this thing is so cool. And again, just last weekend, we started being able to do some experiences here. And of course, it's open to the public to be able to see. And so people can see Drogo. And then, of course, they can come in and interact with Drogo, which is pretty cool. So that's the newest thing here at the Reptarium, of course, 2.0. And we've got some 3.0 stuff that we'll definitely be working on. Champ, the albino blood python. Of course, beautiful T negative, looking great. Of course, Al Machino is deep in shed. One of our favorite animals to pull out here at the Reptarium because he's just kind of big, but not too big. Really good at handling and stuff like that. Of course, we've got salt and pepper. You can't go without saying something about salt and pepper. There's no doubt about that. And Salty, of course, although she's getting big, and she did take that little bit of a nip at me here a couple weeks ago. She is still absolutely wonderful. I mean, look at how beautiful she looks. And she is definitely getting big. It is crazy how large these two are getting. And Pepper is getting big too. Definitely, again, like I always mention, not a handling animal. More of a just kind of a look at and admire type animal. And these guys will go into 3.0 in a giant enclosure. We're really excited about Of course, we have Pickles and gherkin here. The thing that's exciting about that is that they've bred now. And really, 
the kind of actions that Pickles is making is making me believe that she's probably developing follicles. Good chance we're gonna get some eggs from her coming down the road. She's still feeding a little bit, so until she goes off of food, we're gonna continue what we're doing here and then keeping on moving on. Over on this side here, we actually have, of course, Sunfire. Of course, is our beautiful Sun Tiger reticulated python. Just absolutely gorgeous. I've mentioned this before. She's starting to come out a lot too, and I love this enclosure because she oftentimes climbs up on the branches. Now with the new foliage, you guys may have been keeping track that we've been going through and kind of making just more natural foliage in cages, just to my kind of make them pop a little bit. Of course, Tiana, who is the Lewis Eye hybrid, the Cyclura, and you can see, look at her just come right up. She has changed her mentality so much since we got her. She used to be terrified of people. Now she's almost like Bella in the sense that she just comes up and hangs out with us. She loves pets and she's really becoming kind of a fan favorite to be honest with you because she's so kind of, again, just so into attention and stuff like that. We'll definitely have to do that cage. And again, all these splatter marks I've talked about before, Every day we have to clean these because they store salt in a membrane above their nasal cavity and they sneeze the salt out. Nothing wrong with it, just part of it. All iguanas do it. Of course, we got Moo Moo's getting big down here. She's down on this side. She's getting probably close to the size of Perdita, to be honest with you. Of course, we have the black-headed python snap and pop over here. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this enclosure because they can hide in all the crevices and they're always climbing around. Very active snake, so this makes for a cool kind of, usually you can sit here and just watch them move around. It's a cool display, right? Of course, we're working on these guys heavily. This is Sriracha here, and of course, Tabasco's up, and we're working on these guys as well. Uh, I tell you what, Sriracha's getting to the point where it's starting to be able to come out. I think within a very short period of time, we'll be able to take that out during open hours, which is gonna be really cool too. Of course, we have Jeffrey down here in the recently just beautifully redone cage that Jessica did and he is just wonderful. Of course, this is a hypogranite Burmese python, and again, he's gonna eventually outgrow this enclosure, but he'll probably be able to stay in here for another six to eight months, and that's part of running the Reptarium, is again, thinking ahead, right? We've gotta always be thinking like, okay, what happens when a snake that's gonna get 15, 18 foot gets too big for its enclosure? Where are we gonna go next? And that's why it's kind of an, a constant evolution here, and that's also why we wanna do one more expansion, so that we can make sure that we have all of the right size enclosures for everything that we have here so that when they get big like salt and pepper, they'll have a forever home, right? We don't ever want to have to rehome anything or anything like that because we fall in love with these guys and work so hard on them. Of course, we have Heinz up here in the corner, my crimson albino getting so big, and French's is hiding over here. And then down on the bottom, we actually have these, these little monkeys here, Chip and Dale. This happens to be Dale. Of course, these are both female redfoot tortoises. So we need to find a male because they're getting almost to the size where they'll start being able to breed. If get a male, it'd be kind of cool to, to produce some red-footed tortoises here at the Reptarium. There's no doubt about that. Of course, our turtle pond is looking great. Of course, all these little baby turtles. Look at how cute they are. I love when they're all up on their, their rocks over here. And they're looking absolutely amazing. I mean, look at how cool they are. And they eat these little pellets. Kids love this. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. The two most popular things for kids, say under six, seven years old, are the fish spot to stick their hands in it and to mess with the turtles. We don't let them just pick them up. As a matter of fact, we have a sign that says, do not touch. But we will actually take them out and let them hold them and stuff like that. But then we have them wash their hands after that. But we don't want just kids just picking up turtles and stuff like that. But this is an absolutely amazing display too. Right behind us, we actually have Diddy and Dixie right here in the window just chilling out and they're still puppy dogs. I mean, it's winter time so their cage cools off a little bit, but again, they actually cool down during a breeding cycle. A lot of people keep them down in Florida where it gets very cool at night and stuff like that, so it's typical. But they still come out every single time. They come out, they hang out with us. People love them and that's basically Reptarium 2.0. Now we can move on to Reptary 1.0, the original one here. And of course, this is where it all started. Remember, there was a wall here before and this is all that there was here. So it's kind of crazy how far things have come, isn't it? And of course, this guy has always been, since we opened up, a huge, huge animal for us. People love this. Of course, this is Nova, the little baby I showed you, his daddy. And look at those big old frillies. I mean, he is so cute. He is amazing. He loves people. He loves coming out. And, uh, and people love him. I mean, whenever we take him out, it's always great. And again, uh, we're continuing to improve things on this side. We've moved some things around since we've opened. We've added some cages, subtracted some things. And yeah, I know Nova. I know he's like, please daddy, can't maybe come up. Of course, we've got Breadloaf, the Doomerals boa down here, who is of course a uh, male Doomerals 
Emerald Boa that's doing really well. On this side, we actually have Peppa, the hognose snake up here in somewhere. Where are you at, Peppa? Here she is. Of course, hognose snakes are really good, and people love these too. I mean, to take this out, have that cute little nose, this is, I mean, you know, that's the thing I love about the Reptarium is that you can take all these animals out and people just fall in love with them. Of course, Ben and Jerry, I mean, come on, you don't have to say much about Ben and Jerry, the two-headed snake. I mean, just look at how good they're doing. They're eating like crazy. Of course, Ben and Jerry have eaten just recently, which is really great. Down below, we just have a little tiny cow king is hiding in there. And we've added a couple small snakes recently, just so that people that might not be as comfortable with bigger snakes can hold just tiny baby cow kings, baby corn snakes, stuff like that. And then of course we have Night Fury right here. Look at this little monkey right here. He's getting big. He looks absolutely gorgeous. The iridescence on him is crazy cool. Love this guy for sure. And he's definitely doing really, really well. So I, I love him. I, again, we're going to eventually have to move him into a much larger enclosure. Come on, buddy. There you go. So he's one day going to be 15 foot, but I cannot wait till he gets 15 foot because that animal is going to look incredible. Of course, we got Gramps, the albino Chinese king rat snake and the reason we call him gramps is he's the oldest snake now you guys may not know this but the majority of our animals here are relatively young because we wanted animals that were under you know a year to two years when we opened up so that they could be with us for a long long time well gramps is about 20 something years old so he is definitely in his older age of course mango is beautifully right up perched up top mango spends the majority of his time of course a caiman lizard in the water to be honest with you but today he's up on land which is pretty cool we have some leopard geckos up here looking right here, take a peek right here. Look at this little monkey. Hello. Of course, these are green bassless. Oh my gosh, there's like one over here. They are unbelievable. We moved them into this enclosure. It used to be an emerald tree bow enclosure. Moved them in here and it's crazy cool to watch them. This is another enclosure that we really need to spruce up. I've been talking about the fact that we've been going back, adding a lot of foliage and stuff like that to our enclosures. So Tazzy's doing really good. Good morning, baby boy. I know, he's such a sleepy monkey, especially this time of year. They really kind of brumate this time of year. Of course, the little baby alligators that we get from Gatorland. We have two sizes. These ones are only about three months old. And then we have some that are about five to six months old. We keep them for one year, then we exchange them again for a new batch of babies. So these are uh, here for people to feed and stuff like that. We've got, of course, Maisie, the corn snake right here. Really good animal ambassador, just really beautiful snake. I love the fact that it hangs out in this cork right here. Just beautiful, it's just really good. And again, very, very docile, so we can take it out constantly. We have Reptar, the Bosi Island Leechianus, and we have a couple leeches here, including the cage over is actually where Big Bertha, which is the GT, which is the Grand Torino, the main island of New Caledonia. But of course, Reptar is uh, probably one we take out the most because he's the most docile and he loves to be handled and stuff like that. And people love it because they feel so soft and they're so mossy. It's just a very, very interesting animal. Up here, of course, we've got one of our emerald tree boas, which absolutely is amazing. One of the snakes that when I was a kid really kind of made me love, love, love reptiles. Of course, we have some poison dart frogs. We actually have three different species of poison dart frogs. These are what they call the Tinctoris Powder Blues. Uh, and then, of course, Beetlejuice is hanging out right back there. His training is going super well as well. You know, we can open up the cage. He comes right to the front of the cage. You can take him out. He has pretty good claws, so it's going to be a little bit hard to have people hold him. But I think we're going to be able to take him out sometime for sure. Of course, one of the best animals, or I'd say the most popular animals at the Reptarium, would be my girl, Perdita. Perdita is unbelievable. I mean, people love, love, love to handle her. And she's probably the most popular snake. I always say that, you know, it's strange. People will come in and go like, I'm not gonna hold any snake. They're, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of snakes. And then we get to Perdita and they almost always hold Perdita, which is crazy. I mean, she probably is the first snake that people hold, I bet you 500 or 1,000 people in the last year have held Perdita for the very first time out of any snake, which I always find interesting because she's a relatively sizable snake. You'd think that people would want to hold something small first, but they always jump to that. Of course, we got Snazzy, the Burmese python down below here. You know, just a normal Burmese. We want to sometimes have wild type, you know, that collar that you can see in the wild. And Snaz is unbelievably good. Of course, we got Chunky Monkey over here. And of course, we have Virides just hiding right in the back over there. Of course, that's my first green anaconda I ever got, and I love her to death. I mean, obviously, she'll always be super special to me. Joker is another snake that people love because it's so unusual. Of course, we have Argamis Prime, which turned to Argamis 
Mrs. Prime. Then we have Santana up here, the Savannah Monitor that's just chilling out right over here. This is the, the monkey tail skin. Look at this. Oh, that's so cool. Both of them are up right there in the open. Of course, we have chicken strips enclosure right here. Just uh, redone. Uh, Jessica just did this the other day with some more foliage, and now he's hiding out a little more. I talked to you about the little bit bigger alligators from Gatorland right here. So that's these guys on this side. We actually have this guy's really cool. You don't see these around too much, and we like to have some kind of more unusual animals as well. So this is actually a Dominican red mountain boa, which is really cool. I mean, just take a look at how beautiful that snake is. Of course, we have some of our Chihuahua geckos, like this one that's hanging out right here on the glass. And then, of course, right down here, we have one of the big giant geckos from Madagascar. This is what they would call a Felsuma grandis. On this side, we're actually redoing this entire rack right now because ultimately our acanthurus which are up here the dwarf monitors are kind of up high and people can't really see them very much so we're going to redo this entire wall so it's a little bit different and then of course we have flaming hot cheeto another kid's favorite here for sure uh, a bearded dragon, but a nice orange bearded dragon. And that's why we call them Flamin' Hot Cheeto, of course, is because he's just absolutely incredible. Down here, we actually have Tiger Lily, which of course is the Brazilian rainbow boa. Really beautiful snake. People love this one as well. Very docile, very iridescent, and just Look at the beautiful cryptic patterning on it. I mean, I just love Brazilian rainbow boas, so it's really nice to have one here. Over here, we have this crazy dude. This is actually Al. This is the marine toad, and just take a look at how big this toad is. I mean, that's a giant toad, of course. These guys are from Suriname, or this particular one is from Suriname, I should say. Typically, there's a lot of cane toads and marine toads that are kind of all over the world, but the Suriname ones seem to see, be some of the largest ones that have uh, come out, so that's why we wanted to get that. We thought that was really cool. Uh, on this side, we actually have a uh, Molendorfi, which is a hundred flower rat snake, which is a, an, an interesting animal as well. And speaking of Chinese animals, we have, of course, our Oz here, which is our Mandarin rat snake, which is another beautiful Chinese rat snake. And it's, this one's very docile and very interesting looking. And again, it's probably something that you're not gonna get an opportunity to hold too many places. And that's why we wanted it here is because it's just so gorgeous, so good. Of course, we have Elvis down here. He's uh, sleeping up in the back, little lazy monkey up there. And he typically doesn't wake up in the morning. Usually by afternoon, he's out running around. By the evening, he is ready to come out and stuff like that. Of course, my girl, Bella. And you can see the same thing with the splatters on the glass that we have to clean literally two or three times a day. Come say hi. That's my girl. Come on. That's my girl. Hi, Bella. Hi, baby girl. Of course, I love Bella. She's my little monkey. I love her to death. What are you doing, sweetheart? What are you doing? I know. You just coming over to say hi to daddy? Of course, she's been uh, probably my favorite animal at the Reptile Zoo forever. She's my personal pet, and uh, people love her. And just can't believe that we just leave the cage open, and she just comes up for pets and just kind of hangs out with us. And, and uh, I tell you, she is amazing, and she definitely demands a tremendous amount of attention, which uh, I'm always happy to give her. On this side over here, of course, we have our arachnid wall. So we have a bunch of different things like African millipedes. Of course, we've got a rose hair tarantula here named Zombie. That is the one that mainly comes out to be honest with you for holding because it's so docile and it's so easy to take out it'll never bite or anything like that and then we have a little vinegar of course on this side we have snowflake the leucistic texas rat snake here these are of course the giant leaf tail geckos from Madagascar, Cosmo and Wanda. This happens to be Cosmo right here. And then moving on over here, we have some more dart frogs. These of course are the yellow and black, just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I love dart frogs, they're cool. And then we have the blue Azurus over here as well. And then this is actually a Scots garter snake, one of the largest garter snakes in the world, the largest garter snake species. It's actually a Mexican garter snake. Over here we have one of our initial animal ambassadors that has been here since the day we opened and uh, still continues to be one of the kind of more popular animals for people to hold. And of course that is Potato, the Centralian Blue Tongue Skin. Of course Honey, the Piebald Ball Python, which is another great animal ambassador for us. Abasuku recently got a cage overhaul. Uh, you can see Abasuku, hey Abasuku, what's going on buddy? How are you? And then we've got Toothless down here. Toothless is definitely gonna be, he's just laying right over on the heat over here. And uh, we're gonna be doing a makeover for his cage here pretty soon. Because again, just kind of slowly getting around to it. Lucky, of course, the Amazon Tree Boa 
Now it's a little bit feisty at times, but still absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at how pretty that snake is. Down here right below Lucky, we actually have a beautiful gargoyle gecko. Look at the red on that thing, whoo doggy. I tell you, that is a beautiful line. Of course, on this side, we have a, a Honduran milk snake that's in shed right now, albino, Japanese, or Kunis, or island rat. I talked about the Azurus, which are the, the electric blue dart frogs that are looking really beautiful. Down below them, we actually have an albino Darwin's carpet python. Of course, we've got chopsticks, the two-headed turtle in this new enclosure over here. Of course, Daisy is looking great. Got butterscotch up here, just chilling out. This is always uh, a great section where people love as well. This, of course, is Karma, the nosy bee panther chameleon. Got now Fruit Loops, which is the Ambolombi. Down below, we have Snoop Frog. He's out and about right now. We've got Midnight, the Mexican Black King, like I talked about, adding a few other little animals over here. We also have another albino horn frog called the Notorious. Uh, on this side, of course, we have Casper, the beautiful white reticulated python. And then, of course, we have Sunrise here comes out every single night a lot. And it's just a super plastic. I mean, you can just see how absolutely incredible this animal is. On this side, we just have some white tree frogs. We actually have Khalifa, which is the mangrove snake, which is really beautiful in the back over here. You can get a close look at this thing. Of course, this is the mildly venomous snake, but again, we don't take this one out during public hours or anything like that. Lastly, we have a nosy bee panther chameleon female in here. On this side, of course, we have Lucy, my big giant snake right over here, 20 foot long. She's obviously one of the more popular snakes here at the Repcarum as well. Bowser's tank, which might be changing a little bit here pretty soon, but you see Bowser's actually pretty cool. You don't have to ever really worry. He's really pretty docile. You can just kind of bring him right out like that. Really beautiful, big, big animal. Again, 40, going to turn 42 here pretty soon, and uh, he's still got 150 years in him. And then, speaking of 150 years, Matilda, of course, only 16 years old, going to live another, you know, 200 years, and then the leopard tortoises. So, so there is the tour of the zoo, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know every now and then I want to do it because things are kind of always changing here, and you might be thinking, like, I don't remember that. I don't remember this, so on, like that. So, uh, there it is. And of course, we'll be going that way with 3.0. So, we're really excited about that. And I can't wait to maybe sometime you can come actually visit us in person and see and meet and greet all these animals because they're really truly amazing. Let me know if you like this tour and you want me to do them maybe every six or eight months just to show you the updates that we're doing on the zoo. I would certainly like it. If you enjoyed this video, here's a playlist right over here of us building the Reptarium. Uh, if you could click through one or two of those videos, it really helps the channel out a tremendous amount. Up here, you can actually subscribe to my podcast channel where you really get in-depth things about what I believe with reptiles and everything else. On this side, Please help me get to 3 million. We're less than 50,000 away, guys. We are getting so close. Turn all those post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.